today's video is going to upset a lot of people within the Toronto and GTA real estate market. Real estate professionals, buyers, sellers, real estate bulls, real estate bears, wherever on the spectrum you fall, whichever category you belong to, I'm sure today's video will hopefully make you think, but for some of you, it will probably be a little bit upsetting. Why do I say that? Because in today's video, we're gonna talk about fake slash phantom offers within the Toronto and GTA real estate market. We're gonna talk about if it's actually a problem and if it's a problem, to what extent it's an issue, how buyers can navigate this, how sellers can navigate this. Does this implicate Toronto real estate professionals, whether agents or other professionals in the industry? And we're gonna talk about everything else in between. However, before we get into this, topic hello everyone my name is sam if you're new to the channel welcome on the channel we like to discuss everything having to do with the toronto and gta real estate market market stats market updates news items condo reviews area analysis videos buyer advice seller advice toronto real estate vlogs and property tours for homes and condos i have bought or sold so if you find any of this content enjoyable or informative feel free to subscribe comment rate and review or if you have any buying or selling inquiries you can find my contact information in the description box feel free to reach out with any further questions or any inquiries so yes today's video is going to be somewhat of a taboo topic within the Toronto and GTA real estate markets now let me tell you what influenced me to make this video recently on you know real estate Twitter and real estate reddit and really the online spaces where the Toronto and GTA real estate market is discussed there has been this text going somewhat mini viral within this niche of an agent reaching out to an individual via WhatsApp and the screenshots are available asking this individual to submit three to five fake phantom offers for their offer night to induce, obviously in this case, artificial competition and use this as a tool of leverage to bring up whatever actual legitimate offers he has or she has on their hands at that point in time. Now, whether this text exchange is legitimate or not, sometimes I'm very cynical with regards to these, you know, screenshots of DMs and texts that I see online. I have no way of determining if it's real or not. But obviously it does cause this conversation, which is the existence of phantom offers within the Toronto and GTA real estate market. Let me come out the gate with full transparency. Yes, phantom offers do indeed exist within the Toronto and GTA real estate market. And it is a problem that has been plaguing this industry ever since I've been in it. But obviously, I'm sure, you know, even long before me. Now, this problem has been especially, in my professional opinion, exasperated in recent years. But before I tell you why I think it's been exasperated, let me touch on what it actually is and when these phantom offers actually occur in the first place. Phantom offers typically, unfortunately, occur and come up as a problem in markets where listings uh, are attempting the bidding strategy, the offer night strategy, wherein a property is listed way below market value for five to eight days days and stays on market for five to eight days and on the eighth or ninth day there is a official offer date or offer night wherein all prospective buyers will now bid on this property like a auction and oftentimes when it's a moderate market or even a buyer friendly market and this listing strategy is employed sellers and their agents are not actually legitimately receiving that many offers or that much attention simply the market conditions at that point in time do not justify this strategy being employed. As a result, in cooler markets where this strategy is employed, it is in that scenario where you might see phantom offers come into play. Now, how can this be? How can anyone submit a fake offer? Aren't there rules against this? Shouldn't there be a bunch of legitimate documentation to verify the existence of an actual authentic offer? You would think so, but that's unfortunately not the case. You see, for an offer to be formally registered, all you require is the APS, which is the Agreement of Purchase and Sale, which all in all is about two to three forms. It could be anywhere from six to even as high as 15 pages and you need that agreement of purchase and sale along with a form 801 which is a summary of the offer for an offer to be registered formally in theory the selling side should wait until they receive 
the full offer, whether via email, via fax, or in person, to formally register an offer. And by formally registering an offer, that implies that you have now submitted those offer forms you have received from the buyer side to your brokerage or some sort of service which your brokerage has signed up with, which is, for instance, for most people, Broker Bay. But you see, you just need the offer documents. The existence of offer documents does not equate to the existence of an actual buyer willing to submit an offer. The first and last name can simply be made up or fake, or it could be a friend of an agent doing someone a favor. Put aside the fact that it's very unethical and you know, you're know you really risking your reputation and you're risking your license to do this, the amount of time you would need to actually do any of this for four to five offers would be better spent marketing the property or doing something else to bring in actual offers. So yes, unfortunately, it might be a little bit time consuming, but it's very easy in today's industry to employ this unethical method. Now, to what extent is this actually occurring? This is where we need to have a little bit of a nuance, right? Once again, as I always say on this channel, whether I'm discussing the market, whatever I'm discussing, my videos are for the nuanced inclined individuals. If you see the world as a black and white in whatever aspect, my videos are not for you. The nuance comes into play wherein a lot of real estate bears people who are very down and cynical and pessimistic about the real estate market, they assume that anytime a property receives, you know, three to let's say as high as 15 offers, it's just all fake phantom offers. And this is the, unfortunately, this is the popular consensus amongst people uh, online when they talk about the Toronto and GTA real estate market that all multiple offer scenarios, whether it's three offers or 15 offers, they have to be fake. I mean, who's actually bidding on properties? Well, I'm here to tell you, unfortunately, although phantom offers are legitimate, in moderate to hot markets, they are not a big problem. They are not a big issue in actual legitimate moderate to hot markets. Even in moderate to cool markets, most multiple offer scenarios, you're probably seeing very few and far between phantom quote unquote offers. So yes, it is a legitimate problem, but it is not a problem where you can predicate upon all your grievances with the Toronto and GTA real estate market. Simple as that. Unfortunately, it's the fact of the matter that the offer night scenario, the offer night strategy does work on buyers psychologically, and a lot of buyers are placing multiple offers. It seems as if lately multiple offers in the bidding strategy has been the main topic and the main crux of my most recent videos, whether it's because buyers are waiving their protections foolishly, in my opinion, to win on offer night, or whether it is the fact that the offer night and bidding strategy returning is a key sign that the market is shifting towards a seller-friendly side. Whatever it is, it seems as if it's been the topic of discussion for me lately. Unfortunately, what I'm seeing on the ground, many buyers are actually legitimately placing offers. So two things can be true. Yes, phantom offers exist and most offer nights probably are legitimate. Now the key question here, the million dollar question here is, if you are a buyer and you for some reason move towards a property that has a offer night, a presentation night, and you are an interested party, how can you or your agent tell if a offer competing against your offer is a legitimate offer? Well, unfortunately, the answer to that is going to be disappointing to you because there isn't a clean answer. So to answer this question, let me tell you what I always tell my clients if we are competing with another offer. This is my simple message to all my buyer clients. If you're a buyer client of mine, and if you are a buyer client of mine out there who's worked with me, you can attest to this fact that I've said this word for word to you. There is no way to know if the other offer is legitimate or not. All we can do is place the most reasonable and fairest offer according to market comparables. It is none of our business whether the other offer is legitimate or if it's a phantom offer. I can give you my professional recommendation with regards to my gut feeling, but there's no way I can verify. Thus, as a result, don't let the number of competing offers influence your decision. Let's go based upon the facts, based upon the market comparables we've discussed, and based upon the range I have provided you, and submit our best offer in accordance to our budget and the market value of the property. And that's it, that's the answer, that's all you can do. You can't try to investigate whether the other offer is real or fake. Sometimes you might get results, sometimes you might get the wrong impressions. All we as the buyer side can do is do our due diligence, make sure we're submitting the right offer for us, for the property we like. Never let the number of offers on the table as a buyer 
influence your decision. Now, one major thing that would really fix this problem is if blind bidding was done away with. Because if all the agents knew on offer night who the competing offers were and the contents of the competing offer, sure, it still wouldn't fix the problem 100%. It still wouldn't uh, eliminate the possibility of phantom offers, but it would just greatly reduce it. Once again, that's coming from a place where I think it's not even that big a problem to begin with, but it certainly is a problem. Anyways, let me know what you guys think about this issue. Have you come across it? Do you have any recommendations as to how to tackle this problem at a legislative level? As always, this is Sam from Siberia Six Real Estate. You can find my contact information in the description box. Thank you very much for watching. Stay safe and stay tuned. Thank you.